our morning worship service. We'd like to thank you for joining us. My name is Pastor Craig Daughtry from Fifth and Baptist Church. And our opening hymn will be coming from Psalms 95, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Bible says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. We welcome you to join us in praise and worship as we lift up the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, wherever we are, we ask you, Lord, just to come in and touch our hearts, touch our minds. Wash us and make us clean, Heavenly Father. We ask you, Lord, to have your way. And we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, even though we may be watching virtually, Lord, that you will allow us to have an encounter with you that will change our life forever. We vow, Lord, to give you glory. We vow to give you praise. We vow, Lord, to lift up your most holy and righteous name. For, Lord, you say, with two or three gathers, you're in the midst. So, Lord, we call on your name now. We ask you, Lord, to wash us, to cleanse us, and give us ears to hear what the Spirit has said to the church. As we participate in praise and worship, have your way in us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't you clap your hands where you are and lift up glory as our singers come to lift up the name of Jesus. God bless you.
And we pray that Heavenly Father, as we get to the preaching now, Lord, that you will just speak to us, Heavenly Father. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. I pray to God, Lord, that you have it behind your cross. Speak through this vessel of yours. I yield unto you. Have your way like never before. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's praying time. It is praying time. Good morning to the body of Christ. Good morning to the called out to the redeemed of the Lord. Good morning, family. Good morning, Clifton Baptist Church. On the 10th day of a brand new year, one must still confess that this is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We must declare that God is still a good God, and he still sits high and looks low. We must confess that God is still on our side, and this is our year. However, one must not, I cannot ignore the disgraceful spectacle of violence, lawlessness, and chaos that occurred in this country on Wednesday, January the 6th, 2021. It is time to pray for revival. It is time to pray for God to heal the land. It is time to pray for God to guard our hearts and don't allow any hatred and bitterness to fester and take up residence in our hearts when we destroy our testimony. And I understand you may feel justified in feeling the way that you're feeling, but you got to pray that God does not allow bitterness and hatred and envy and spite to get in your heart as you hold up the bloodstained banner. We cannot become what we hate or what we despise. We cannot become what we've seen on TV. It is always easy to uh, uh, allow our disgrace to turn to hate and bitterness but I come to let you know that it is praying times and we must pray we declared in 2020 as 2020 departed and 2021 entered that we will finish 2020 strong and we will start 2021 Correct, and we were started on the right note and the right beat and, and march to the, the, the drum of God. But last week, God told us that we had to start correct, and that start correct sometimes you got to have a flashback. He let us know that we cannot forget what the Lord has done for us and what He's brought us over. Have you ever had that flashback that reminded you of the hand of God upon your life? Your flashback will make you dance sometime. Your flashback will make you smile sometime. Your flashback will make you have a little hope. So God says we must have a flashback and not forget what he's brought us through. Amen. We must have a flashback and hold on to the fact that God is still God. God is still in control. And in times like this, when you don't understand what in the world is going on? When you don't understand the level of hatred and bitterness and racism, when you don't understand the acts of those that, that, that they act like they're acting in the name of Jesus, call themselves Christians, call themselves patriots, when, you, when, you, when you're able to view that hatred, in times like these, we got to pray. We got to be reminded that we serve a God that's able to do anything. In times like these, we have to be reminded that we serve a loving God and a forgiving God. In times like these, we must be reminded that we serve a God that sits high and looks low. We serve a God that is attentive to our prayers. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're going to start this year right, we must pray. We must bow our knee. We must call upon the name of the Lord. In times like these, we must pray. 
I know sometimes we want to point at everybody else and tell them to pray and tell them to get correct. But God is calling those that have been saved, those that have confessed Jesus as a Savior, those that say that they are a true Christian and believer. God is calling the church of Jesus Christ to pray. Prayer makes the impossible possible. Prayer open up doors. Prayer changes things. Prayer provides comfort and gives hope. Prayer brings peace and strength. Prayer keeps your mind stayed on Jesus. Prayer gets God's attention. Prayer sounds the alarm. Prayer is where the battle is won. So you want to know what you got to do as you sit there and watch CNN and ABC and CBS and all of the news channels. As you scroll through your social media pages, what I'm asking you to do is take a, a fast from that and pray. Because the longer you watch that 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 that, 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 that foolishness over and over and over again, the devil is able to put in hatred and bitterness and envy and spite in your heart, but you got to guard your heart and your mind. Because what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. And before you know it, you'll be acting like the behavior that we call this race. That's right. That's right. The behavior that we call riotousness and lawlessness and chaotic mm -hmm. and unpatriotic. Yeah. I said it before and I'll say it again. We said that 2020, year of clear vision, God has revealed. Not only things in us as individuals in those areas where he wants us to grow and he wants us to stretch out in him, but he also was revealed in mankind. Yeah. The evilness and hatred and bitterness. You don't have to wonder what your neighbor think about you now. They have displayed it on TV in the name of patriotism. Amen. So we got to watch and pray. You got to pray and watch. You got to guard your heart. So God is calling the church to pray. The Bible says, the Bible says that men ought to always pray and not faint. The Bible says pray without ceasing. The Bible says pray and always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. The Bible says be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. The Bible says, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubt. And the Bible says, confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that ye may be Healed. He goes on to say in James, the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So prayer is always in order. We're starting our year off right. So we got to pray. 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 Prayer is always in order, and any relationship worth having is built on communication, and God desires to communicate with his people. Yeah. Prayer, prayer, prayer is how we communicate, how we talk to God. God uh, is how uh, God communicates and talks to us through his word. We respond to his word with action. He responds to our prayers with actions. So that takes us to our text. That is praying time. It's time to pray. The Bible says, the message Bible of our text, when we read from the message Bible, says Solomon completed building the temple of God and the royal palace. The promise he had set his heart on doing. Everything was done. Success, satisfaction. Oh, uh, Solomon completed his task. He built the temple. It does come out of this great festival, this great uh, celebration. 
The Bible says that God appeared to Solomon that very night and said, I accept your prayers. Yes, I indeed, I accept your prayers. But he says, I have chosen this place, this temple that you built for me. I have chosen this place for sacrifice. I have chosen it as a house of worship. Doesn't that sound good? You just come out of a celebration. God comes and meets with you and says, I heard your prayer. And God says, I have selected your house. Say my house. Your house. Say my house. God has selected your house as a place of worship. God has selected your place where you meet with God and, and he's going to meet with you at a specific time, at, in a specific place in your house. God has said, I have selected your house as a place of worship and sacrifice. I have heard your prayer. God is saying, everything is going well now. You have been obedient unto my voice. You have completed your task. You have been in constant prayer with me. And I've heard you. But then verse 13 shows up. Two letter word. It says if. <laughs> God says if. Yeah. If, if, if. If I ever shut off the supply a rain from the skies or order the locusts to eat up your crops. If and ever I send a plague on my people. What God is saying is if ever you experience an unexpected turn of events. If and ever a, a chaos suddenly shows up in your life. If as ever it looks like you don't know what in the world is going on. If yeah. ever it looks like you don't have what you need, that there is light in your house, if there is sickness in your surroundings, if there is a coronavirus running rapid, if as ever it looks like God is not there, if and ever there is violence in your streets, if ever there is uncertainty in your community. If ever you get to the place where you don't know what to do. If ever you get to the place where you're not able to come to church to 100 Big Hill Road. If ever you get to the place where the President of the United States incites a riot among his own people. If ever you get to the place where there's a devil standard, if ever you get to the place where justice is no longer blind, if ever you get to the place where people have cast off restraints and lost all vision, God says, if my people who call by my name God is saying, if my people respond the right way, if my people who are called by my name responds the correct way, what's your response to what you have seen? You just can't talk about it. You just can't tweet about it. You got to pray about it. Because what you're saying on Twitter, what you're saying on TikTok, what you're saying on Facebook, what you're saying on your social media page doesn't change a thing. But when you speak to God, that's when change occurs. When you talk to God about what's going on, that's when God takes the heart of uh, a man and change it. When you bow your knees. Your response determines what happens next. There is deliverance in your response. God says, if my people respond the right way. John Bavia, the author of the baby of Satan and undercover, he always says, your response determines what happens next. See, it's not what we're going through that, 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 that God is trying to surprise us because we saw this coming. 
We've been living through foolishness since March and, and, and in February. All this year, probably for the last four or five years. We've been living through ups and downs, roller coaster rides, surprises, and, and jaw dropping events. But God says, I've been trying to get your attention. But God says, what's going to be your response when you're living through all of this hell that you're going through? When you're living through all these surprises? Listen, 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 listen. God will send us through a season, watch it now, where he sacrifices our comfort to conform our character. God will send us through a season where he sacrifices our comfort to conform our character. God will sacrifice, he will take away your comfort. You have become so comfortable with playing church. Yeah. You have become so comfortable with sitting in your favorite seat. You have become so comfortable with going through rituals and routines, but still not knowing God, still not calling out to God. You have become so comfortable in your religion, so comfortable in your America, so comfortable in doing things the way you want to do it. But God says, I will sacrifice your comfort to conform your character. And God will give us character that's after him. So we can't come together. But we can pray. We may not be able to hit and it's come inside the four walls. But we can pray. He is not interested in our performance. In our social media posts. He is not interested in, 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 in our programs and our titles. And he's not interested that you're deacon and reverend and pastor. He's not interested. Are you a believer? Yeah. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Have you bowed your knee? Have you prayed? Have you fasted? Have you turned over your plate? Have you paid your tithes? Have you forgiven those that have wronged you? What have you done? We've gotten away from revival. We've gotten away from laying hands. We've gotten away from coming to the altar and just staying there for a while. We've gotten away from the basics. But one thing holds true. Prayer. We are living through desperate times. And God's word is still the same. If my people if you go through something if you go through a storm that backs you up in a corner all you got to do is respond the right way he says if my people which are called by my name I hear you God you got to know who you are you got to know whose you are you got to know that you are a sheep of a great shepherd. He says, I am the Noah. Yeah. You can't come in through no other way. You can't come in through Buddha. You can't come in through Muhammad. You can't come in through a chant. You can't come in through all these declarations you're making. You can't come in through just positive speaking. But you got to know Jesus as your Savior. You got to know Jesus as your King. You got to know Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. You got to know Jesus. Psalms 95 says, oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. He is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Psalms 100, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Who you running behind? The tragedy of the events. Is that they do this supposedly because they're supposed to be Christians. But yet they have switched. And this is what God was warning uh, 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 Solomon about. You can't work, you can't lead me to worship any other idol. Trump has become an idol that a large majority of America is now worshiping. Twitter has become his, uh, his, 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 his Bible, his, his way of saying the commands, and they follow it to the T. But revival 
starts with believers. Amen. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So you got to know who you are and whose you are. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, yeah. if we will only respond correctly, but what's the response? He says, first you got to humble yourself. You got to know that you're not all that in a bag of chips. You got to know that there's a God that sits high and look up. You got to know that God is an almighty God. You got to know who the Lord is. Humble yourself. Bow before his presence. God says, God, God resists the proud but give the grace unto the humble. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of God and he shall lift you up. He shall exalt you. Humble yourself. Reverence God. Worship God. Pray to your God. Seek God while he may be found. Humble yourself. Not that you humble yourself. The Bible says that we got to pray. We got to call on the name of the Lord. We got to pray. We got to be in constant communication with God every day. You got to pray. The Bible says this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him. When you going to get to the point where you're crying unto God? When in desperate times somebody need to be crying unto God. Every prophet, every preacher, every man of God, every woman of God need to get to the point where we're crying unto God. Stop looking at it like it has an impact in your house. Because our children, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, doesn't matter, has seen this foolishness that has been uh, bombarded on our TV screens. And they form opinions one way or the other. They recognize that there's devil standards. We know this. To be black or brown in America versus being white in America. We understand that there's a different standard. But in the year 2020, and let me tell you something. God says, I know that you like to Mark your time by TikTok of a calendar. Mm -hmm. But as we see, just because 2020 ended, the devil didn't stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Foolishness, he's still seeking whom he may devour. He's still bringing chaos. He still have hatred and bitterness. I know we stepped into a new year, but the devil hasn't stopped. It don't just go away because your calendar now says 2021. God is calling us to pray. We recognize what the enemy is doing. We recognize his divisive ways. But God will sacrifice our comfort to conform our character. So our response got to be where we humble ourselves, where we pray, where we seek the face of God. Where we run after God with all we have. Where we, 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 we're fully committed to running after the things of God. You can't run after the face of God if you don't know what his word says. The Bible says in the beginning was his word and his word was with God and his word was God. You can't connect to the vine if you don't know where the vine is. Seek his face, run after, pursue it with all your strength, with all your might. And turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Turn from your wicked ways. He's talking to Solomon. He's talking to uh, the children of Israel. Turn. Not talking to heathens. Not talking to those on the capital steps. Hmm. He's talking to the church. Yeah. 
Yes, he is. He's talking to the church. It's time for the church to turn. He says, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. How you respond determines what happens next. True revival starts with repentance and conviction. True revival starts with repentance and conviction. Psalms 51. The Bible says, David says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitudes of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is forever before me. You got to acknowledge your sin. Yeah. Recognize it against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight thou hast. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, David says, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth. In the inward parts. And in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Uh, this is our prayer for, for God right now. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones that thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then verse 13, which I love, says, Then will I then will. teach transgressors thy ways, right, right. and sinners shall be converted unto uh, you. Tell your neighbor, it starts at the church. It starts at the church. It starts with the church Get it in right position with God for God to now start turning the situation around. Because so you would take advantage of the platform that you have, not just to talk about what you see, but to talk about mm -hmm. your Jesus mm -hmm. that's able yes, yes. to make a turn. That's right. See, sometimes we magnify the actions of the devil. By repeating it over and over and over and over and over again and, and allowing it to rewind in our head where it begins to erase what God has brought us through and brought us over. Now, nah, devil, you're not going to steal my joy. As my friend, as my, my, my colleague is saying, I choose joy. Uh, we tell God, thank you that I choose joy. I will not rest in bitterness. I will not rest in hatred. Yes, I was confused when I saw it. Yes, I was a little ticked off when I saw it. Yes, I was a little confused. But I decided that I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to guard my mind. And I'm going to pray for those that I know that probably don't like me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. Pray for those that despitefully use you and talk about you. You got to pray for them. Pray for their minds. Pray for their hearts. Pray for God to do a turnaround. As we humble ourselves, as we worship, as we pray, as we seek the Lord, we must position ourselves, watch it now, to expect God to hear our prayer. You must position yourself to expect God to hear your prayer. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. We must position ourselves to expect God to forgive our sins. We must position ourselves to expect God to heal our land. I expect God to Heal the land. Mm -hmm. I expect that better days are on the horizon. I expect mm -hmm. that the best is still yet to come. I expect, because mm -hmm. I recognize 
Christianity is not a black thing or a white thing or a Hispanic thing or a, a, a rich thing or a poor thing or a middle class thing. How the politicians try to play Christianity. No, a Christian is someone that has accepted Jesus Christ as his or her savior. And then I live it out of the tenets and the principles of God's word. Don't you be bamboozled to believe this foolishness that you're seeing on TV. So we got to expect God. Expect to hear God. We got to expect to see God in our daily walk with him. So as I close, and I know it's probably not what you was expecting today, but I cannot ignore what in the world is going on in our world. It's time for every Christian, every born again believer, every baptized believer to stand up for righteousness, to stand up and speak out against hatred and bitterness, to stand up and speak out against uh, uh, jealousy, to stand up and speak out against injustice and racism, to stand up and speak out. We got to know that prayer works and it's praying times. Amen. Close your jaw in surprise and bow your knee in prayer. In spite of recent events that has bombarded our TV screens, social media sites, phone conversation, and family dinner. Mm. In such times like these, we must pray. In such times like these, we must repent. In such times like these, we must guard our hearts and our minds and, 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 and educate our children. In times like these, we must call on the name of the Lord and pray for God to heal the land. In times like these, we must recognize that we are in need of revival and true revival starts with conviction and repentance when it starts at the church house. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where your heart is. I don't know. But I know as a church, as a believer, they want to say this is not the true America. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I have evidence to say that it is. Yeah. And until God intervenes, will we see change come? Yeah. For years, this stuff was under the rugs and in backwoods. Yeah. And for years, this type of mindset was set behind certain corporate businesses as they manipulated the laws and, and, and dictated who got in and who did not get in. For years, this type of mindset has been uh, uh, running rampant, even through Congress itself. Yeah. Yeah. How in the world, out of all these years of existence, we've only had 11 black men as a congressman? Mm -hmm. Just the first one from the state of Georgia? And you want to tell us that racism and hatred and bitterness does not exist? Check your heart. We got to pray for God to even change our heart. And for us to get a true picture of who Jesus Christ is. For the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory. So there's no big eyes and big U's. There's nobody that's better than anybody else. For all have sinned Amen. and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But God says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek and, and, and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for your word of comfort. That if we respond appropriately, if we respond in the right way, by humbling ourselves and praying and seeking your face and pursuing you and running out for righteousness and repenting and turning and repenting from our wicked ways. God, you say in your word, you will hear our petitions, you will hear our call, you will hear our cry. 
and you will heal the land. You will forgive us of our sins. So Lord, we pray right now that you heal the land, God. That you heal the land. One person at a time. Heal the land, Lord, individually and collectively, as we like to say. Heal the land, God. Start it with me. Continue to protect my heart and my mind from bitterness and anger and strife. Don't allow me to hate those that I know hate me. Don't allow me to prejudge. But allow me to walk in love. Allow me to treat the next man like I want to be treated. With respect and dignity. God, I don't want to be walking down the street and another man is able to judge me because of the color of his skin. God, allow us to walk in love. God, we pray for the President of the United States. We pray, Lord, for his mind and his heart and his family and his capital. We tell you, thank you, Lord, even though it took some time to reveal what was really in him. We pray, Lord, for an exit plan. And we pray, Lord, for the president that shall be taking ranks. We pray, Lord, that you give him wisdom. We pray, Lord, that you give him counsel. We pray to God, Lord, that you give him a balance, that you keep him a uh, uh, humble to God, where he will be able to reverence you and know that all power belongs to you, that you got up with all power in your hand. I don't care how they say America is the greatest and the most powerful. No one is more powerful and greater than you. So Lord, we pray for him and we pray for Vice President Madam Harris. We pray to God, Lord, that you be their strength, that you be their God. We pray to God, Lord, that you lead them and guide them in every step that they take. We pray, Lord, for our local government, our local officials. We pray, God, Lord, that you'll put their hand in your hand and they will listen to your voice. We pray to God, Lord, for our fellow man, our fellow neighbor, our community members, those that, that live next door to us. Because we recognize, God, that they have showed up on Capitol Hill, but it's in our neighborhoods right here in Savannah. We pray, Lord, that we can have peace, that we can have an understanding, that we can have a conversation that we can recognize that all of us are human beings in need of a savior. We pray, Lord, for the hearts and minds of our children that anger and bitterness will not fester. But, Lord, they will see that you are great and awesome and mighty God. And even through this fiasco, you are able to keep your people. You're able to uh, 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 turn the situation around. And I pray that God, Lord, as we still continue with starting the year right, that prayer is on our agenda. We say, Lord, we will not forget what you've done for us. And Lord, as we start this year, we will also put prayer on our agenda. Give all of us a praying spirit. Call us to prayer, God. Call us with a time of communion with you. And Lord, we shall answer your call. And come and bow our knee and bow our heads. Lord, so bless your people now. As we pray that you forgive us of our sins and heal the land. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For those of you that don't know Jesus in a part of your sin. In times like these will be such a great time to call on the name of the Lord. To call on him and ask him to come into your hearts. To forgive you of your sins. To wash you and to make you clean. For the Bible says in Romans that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So right where you are, if you don't know Jesus in a part of your sin, you can start off this year in the right way by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior. By believing that God has raised him from the dead. By confessing that you are a sinner and he is your Lord. By turning away from your sin and turning towards your God. You can't start in your right. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Point to the screen. Lift up your hand wherever you are. And say, God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Wash me and make me clean. I confess that I'm a sinner. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I call upon you as my Savior and my King. Lord, if your word is true, you said that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I'm calling on you now. Say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. If you pray that prayer, <coughs> you are saved. If you ask God to come into your heart, you are saved. So give God a chance. Give God a try. I pray that you have a blessed 2021. And those of you that know the Lord as your Savior and King, let's humble ourselves. Let us pray. Let us seek the face of our God. And expect God to forgive our sins and heal the land. Now may the grace of God and the sweet of his Holy Spirit rest you and by his hope now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 Our sins are going to come and we're going to celebrate as we go home. God bless you. Join us in praise and worship one more time. God bless you.